Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Ksenia, and I am here to do a little workshop with you today on behalf of Artbeat Studio. Um, so hopefully some of our regulars are joining us. Um, but if you are new to Artbeat, um, not familiar with what we do, just a quick little intro. Um, so our thing is um, that Artbeat is a not-for-profit um, registered charity, and um, we know that um, art is a vital tool um, in mental health. So um, we operate on this in a few ways. Um, we have an artist in residency program. Um, we have a boutique gallery uh, where you can buy the works of those artists who have gone through that program. Um, and we have a drop-in center um, called Studio Central located at 444 Kennedy uh, here in Winnipeg. Um, because of course of the current pandemic, um, we are not open for in-person programming at Studio Central. Uh, so we are doing some workshops online. Um, when we are open, uh, you can drop in any day at about one o'clock and um, partake in a workshop. Um, so now we are hoping that you will drop in online and also partake in a workshop at 1 p.m. on weekdays. Um, so today uh, we're going to do a drawing workshop um, and we are going to explore the concept of gesture drawings. Um, so gesture is a way to capture a figure. Um, it involves um, laying down the form, the movement, and the pose of the figure, so someone in a dynamic position. Um, and there's no really like one right way to do a gesture, so I'm going to show you like some different pieces of that and some ways that your, your figure might end up looking. Um, and we're just going to um, sort of go quick and sketchy and loose and uh, just have an easy time to learn a new technique. Um, so all I am using today, um, because I am alone, <laughs> I don't have a figure to pose in front of me, um, I am using um, some ads from magazines with some people in them in fun and interesting poses. Um, so what we're doing too, because this is an intro to gesture, is we're going to be tracing. Um, so that's partly why um, we are doing the magazine thing. Um, if you've got some magazines or some photos, then that's a great way to uh, introduce yourself to this, this figure drawing in a way that's less intimidating. Um, if you haven't, if you, you find that you can't see through your paper to see the figure, um, putting, taping your paper to a window and then laying your, your piece on top of it um, totally works. I have like a fancy schmancy light box that I got myself as a birthday present um, in art school, um, which has served me very well. So I'm going to use that, but a window works just as well, honestly. Um, and you know, if, if you don't have something printed out, you can of course like pull a figure up on your um, screen of your device and draw it. Um, I mean, if you have a tablet and you feel comfortable with that, you can even um, turn up the brightness on your tablet and lay your, your paper on top of that. Um, I hadn't thought of that really because I'm in a low tech frame of mind, but that's absolutely a thing you can do. Um, and of course, like you can just have the image in front of you and, and work on drawing it as though you're in a life drawing class or, you know, grab your um, person that lives in your household and have them pose for you, also an option. Um, but as I said, we are we are starting with the basic of like, what is a gesture and how do I begin to capture it? So um, there's no problem if you've never done this before or if drawing people is intimidating. I have found it intimidating. Um, <laughs> lots of people do. You are not alone. Um, so that's why we are starting with these printed figures. Um, so back to the materials. We've got some printed figures. I've got some paper. I've got my light box or a window or whatever you want to use. Um, I'm going to use these. Ooh, very loud, sorry. Um, some fun markers. Um, I am wanting to, as I said, keep myself like very loose and not um, overthinking about things. So I find that like these colored markers really help me to just like go at it um, and they're permanent. So I can't undo anything, which is <laughs> a good thing for me in this moment. Um, but you can absolutely do a gesture with like pastel or paint or whatever you might want to do. So whatever makes you happy. Um, go for that. Uh, so what is a gesture? There's a few different ways that you can do this. Um, so I started with this, this picture is a little small, uh, this fun picture of Alicia Keys doing a pose in a magazine. Um, and it's really interesting because um, it's like a, you can tell she's sort of moving through it. It's a dynamic kind of pose. It's not just standing still, but of course you can do a gesture of someone standing there looking straight at the camera as well. So you can see her arms are up above her head. Um, and, and she's got her feet a little bit apart. Um, her hip is kind of tilted. Um, so the way I started with this, I've got my page O gestures as my example here, and we'll go through. 
Um, so the first one I started with, again, I was tracing, um, <laughs> peeking around behind my paper. Um, so I, I put in the line of like the tilt of her hip and the fact that her body was angled a different way and the tilt of her chest, you could do the shoulders and I wanted to get the head, sort of the angles of that. So those thick um, blue lines there, I, I put in first as I was looking at the image. I went, okay, hips here, chest here, da 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 And then I just sort of traced around the outline following those poses. So that's um, that can exist on its own, like in this image, it exists on its own, but it could also be step one. You could lay those in um, lightly if you wanted to and, and then continue on um, with your figure on top of it. Um, this one is sort of, if you've seen a, um, they're called little mannequins. Um, I'm just going to disappear behind this paper at some point, and that's fine. <laughs> Hooray for live workshops. Um, but those little posable figures that you sometimes see in art stores, um, and they're, they're made up of all these different like ovals with little elastics in the joints, and you can pose them. So this is sort of a version like that, where again, with the picture, I went over the the sort of larger parts of the body, like the thigh and then below the knee. So just wherever there's a joint, I sort of ended that circle um, or oval, I suppose, is really um, just to to see where the the body was going and where, where her joints were at. So in there, you see, again, captures the tilt of the hip and the bend of the knee. Um, and you're going to notice that like hands and feet are for a lot of people like the bane of their existence. I like drawing feet. I do not like drawing hands. Um, everyone is different. Some people hate them both. You'll see a lot of, um, when I went to school, I went to theater school. And so like, we have to do all these costume designs and there's a lot of costume designs where people like have their hands behind their back or like up here because they need to draw the hand. Um, <laughs> and your teachers catch onto that real quick, but you can usually get away with it about like three or four times. Um, so <laughs> we're not being worried about like the fingers and the, the feet really in these, because again, it's the gesture. It's meant to capture the form and the move, movement and the, the volume of the figure. Um, so just sort of indicating where they are. Um, switch over this way. <laughs> um, so some other ways to do it are, um, as I said, we want to capture the volume. Um, no person is flat. Um, we are using flat pictures, but they are of three dimensional people. And if you were drawing a figure who's standing in front of you, even more so, they are even less flat. <laughs> um, so to do that, you can fill in in a few different ways. So in this one, it's sort of similar to that like mannequin idea where I'm filling in um, noticing where the joints are. Um, and it's like a, a sort of scribble fill, um, just being concerned with um, where where those joints are. Um, you can weight it a little bit. Um, you know, something is curved, there's more um, like density, more um, shadow around um, where it's curving away from you. So you can indicate that in here as well. And then this is about this last one, um, which is the same as this one in the middle, same technique, just using a broader um, or thinner marker. Um, those ones are about going around the shape. So if I may use my own arm, my arm goes around this way. So on Alicia Keys picture, I want to go around where those indicators are to sort of sculpt the shape and give it some dimensionality. Um, and that can be useful too if your figure is wearing clothes. Um, that's a really great way to capture like the volume of the clothes um, if it's coming off of their body. So that's like a crash course in, in different kinds of um, ways you can capture a gesture. And of course you can layer those, as I said, you might wanna put the angles in first and then scribble over top of it, or then do the three dimensions. You could put all of these on top of each other. Um, in the end, you could come back and you could outline um, with a, a smooth line. But um, the important thing is that um, an outline or a contour is something I'll teach a workshop about next week. Um, so tune in for that. Um, but it's like not what we're concerned with today. Um, we know that our person has a face. I know she's got um, eyes and a mouth and stuff like that. Um, I might be concerned with like putting a line where the eyes are, but that's it. I'm not going to draw an outline of the eyes. I'm not going to draw an outline of her hair. Um, we talked about the hands where, where the shirt is. Um, if the shirt is bunched up, maybe we'll emphasize that with the gesture, but we're not going to draw like the edge of the shirt and the edge of the pants. Um, that's for another day. <laughs> So I'm going to turn on my light table and see how this messes up my lighting. Ooh, gorgeous. Um, and the first one I'm going to start with is the angular type of gesture. So I've got this model who's doing lots of fun things um, with her pose. And I've sort of angled everything so that 
you can see it a little better. So it's just going to take me a minute to um, orient myself. Put paper on. And that'll lose some of that extra light. Um, so I realize you can't really see the pose of the model through the paper, but I can. So <laughs> you'll just see it appear as it comes up. Um, so again, for, for this, I'm sort of concerned with where her um, angles are. So let me take one more look. Yes. It is um, tricky with when you have another, like a magazine that's double print, double sided. Um, so if you do put it on your window, just be aware you're going to see whatever is on the back of the page through the, <laughs> through the magazine as well. Um, so her chest, she's kind of like leaning over. So I'm going to do that. Her shoulders, doing that. Her neck is coming up at a similar angle to her chest. There's her eyes. So I can indicate her head is over here. Eyes are curved around. She's got like a knee coming forward and receding back. Another peek. She's there and her hips are like that way. So you'll often find that someone, um, like when they're, they're tilting a little bit, their shoulder comes down and like say the left shoulder comes down and then the left hip goes up. Um, so generally if someone is not like curved over to the side and you've drawn their shoulder and hip going um, in the same direction, um, you're gonna be like, why does this look off? And, and that's why, because our brains sort of think that things should be curved in the same way and that is not always true in a dynamic pose. Got like one more arm coming down here, there it is. That ad on the back is really throwing me off. <laughs> okay, so that's sort of like the, um, the indications of where her body is at and then I can just sort of go in for a quick little outline. So I've put in those angles um, and then this again I'm keeping it very angular as to like where her body is so I'm not like smoothing out that outline at all. Shoulder. And There we go. So that's just a quick gesture that captures the pose of our model there. Should just fix up the waist and hip there. Getting connected to her arm. There we go. So very quick, we get the idea of the pose that this model is making um, in a fast and angular sense. So we're going to put that one away. Um, I can show you one more with this. This model is, you know, got a bikini on because she's showing us just how beautifully shaved her legs are because it's an ad for Venus. Um, for a razor. Um, so we're not really concerned with the content of the ad, just the angle of the body. <laughs> so her back is actually like, she's kind of curving her back as she pushes her chest forward. Um, and this is a, a back view, so... Um, and we're just getting the back of her head there. Arms, hands on top of the head. Here's her hips are coming up this way again. So you can see that her shoulders are a little harder because they're from the back, but we've got shoulders and hips coming together again to do that. And her legs are very, very straight. And then she's kind of standing on her toes. And her legs are crisscrossed. So we've got her legs coming through. There we go. Super fast gesture of, um, of that model. Just trying to get it into the frame. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so those are the angles. Um, now we're gonna have a little bit of fun here. 
So for this one, I want to try um, that technique, sort of like the, the mannequin that I was telling you about with like the different ovals that make up the body and come to the joints. So this is a fun dynamic pose, person doing a plank or a push up. see it better okay um so for this i'm not really concerned like i said with the outline like with her nose and whatever i might just like let it indicate a little bit just so that we indicate that it's a human but um other than that I'm not worried about it so there's the bit for her head um and heads are bigger than we think because of course you include the hair with the head um so here's her shoulder up to the elbow to the wrist and i'm gonna just like loosely indicate some fingers just for kicks. This comes down to the wrist and the fingers. We have the neck, which doesn't have to be its own circle, but sometimes it sort of helps me figure out where I'm at. Chest comes there, the belly is here. Um, and then the legs are a little hard to tell because she's got these black pants on, but you can actually see that you can see both thighs. And I am going around the clothing, like this person's wearing some baggy workout pants type things. Um, so for now, we're gonna go around that too. Um, and there we go. So that took me, you know, like what, 10 seconds. Um, of course, it's gonna take a little longer if you're drawing something in the real world than if you're tracing it. But um, again, we're just really concerned with like capturing the pose. And I think that, that we've done that here. So for this person who's advertising some kind of skincare, um, I like this pose because of the, the fact that she's sitting and, and there's a little bit going on with the different angles of the body. Um, so we're going to try um, that scribbly technique where we sort of fill in the different parts of the body. I had all these plans of like changing my colors up, but I think I'm just going to stick with the purple for now. Um, so let's start with the head. We're sort of programmed to do that, I think, as as human beings. And I am like incorporating that eye line and the line in there. Get that neck. Now I like to switch direction and again, sort of work with those, those points like the mannequin has, um, because it helps me to see, like you see her, her body's folded on itself, right? So that's gonna help show me um, where her arm is. Um, but you could, you know, of course do a silhouette right where where all the the things go the same direction um but that doesn't really help you capture the movement of the pose necessarily it then is just a um just a blob which is you know a totally legitimate and interesting kind of art so i'm doing that to, and i'm using as i said sort of like not drawing the edges of the clothes but when your figure is wearing clothes um, you can use the wrinkles in the clothes a little bit to help you see what their body is doing. Like if the, the wrinkles are all coming together at the, at the waist, that would, you know, indicate that, that they're bent at the waist, right? And, um, if it's stretched on the other side, that sort of thing. So that can help you go through I'm wearing these white, um, pants that are just a little hard to see with the light. So got to take a peek there. There's the knee. This is really all one sort of thing. Here's the foot. Again, who cares about toes? Not us. She's got these high heels on, which are kind of fun. So I'm going to indicate that as much as I can as well. Okay. And then this way. So then I'm going to just sort of emphasize a little bit, um, emphasize that hand a little bit more that these are closer to us and coming off the body and therefore a little bit darker. And it also just helps us um, understand that they're a different part. This is the, um, the thigh. 
Um, and you know, we are capturing like movement and volume, so we can capture your voluminous hair here as well. I don't know if I like that choice to capture the hair, but it's done now. Um, so there we go. Again, a, a pretty quick gesture. And we've done like a little bit of emphasizing with um, shadow by putting more weight on, on some of those areas, but like not too, too much. She was quite fun. I enjoyed drawing her. Okay. Um, so now we're going to go back to that last technique that I showed you with sort of the the curves that wrap around the body and indicate the, the volume. Um, we've got this person here. She's selling that outfit. Um, she's sitting again, which is fun. And the, the outfit is a sweater and some um, wider cut slacks. So we've got, um, again, the volume of the clothing there, which is really interesting. Um, and that really great textured hair, um, which we're not outlining, but can still be part of our Things. So the face, again, not drawing the nose, but sort of that's the line of the nose and the line of the eyes. And that's just going to help me um, to indicate. So this technique is kind of fun too, because it lets you indicate like where the light is, if you would like to do that. Um, so I'm going to be like emphasizing with my um, sort of curvy scribbly business, the, the parts that are in shadow. And then I want to get the roundness of that arm. This one I'll probably like go back and layer over again. You'll notice that some of them, um, for me personally, I find it's easier to like go in order and sort of do like one pass on the whole body and then we're done but others, um, I jump around a little bit and that is all up to you. So I've actually done like the roundness of every little finger here too. the knee here so we want to come around the leg in this way oh and i'm out of frame have i been out of frame like that for the whole time i'm so sorry i think i probably have because i adjusted upwards for you to see something and i never put the camera back so this is maybe not the most dynamic workshop to watch and i apologize shoes and this is like the back of her leg where she's sitting I think I will fill in some of that awesome hair and I will cheat a little bit and let the texture come through in this way. Not cheating really, it's just combining techniques which as an artist you're more than welcome to do so. Why not really? Okay, so that's where I'm at for her. Um, so it does emphasize the, the volume and the shape and the pose. Um, and then I could um, perhaps go further on it and just throw in a little bit around the edge to help indicate clean it up a little bit. Um, so that one took me ever so slightly longer. Um, I think mostly due to the nature of the pose um, rather than the particular like gestural technique. And this is the last one I'd like to do. It's a little smaller. Um, 
but it's just interesting because there's there's two people there um and they're definitely in dynamic pose because they're dancing so i might do this one um, a couple of times in a couple of different ways so we'll start with the ballerina here and i think i'm gonna do that sort of um, joint emphasizing mannequin type pose just to get a feeling for what she looks like here and then we've got the um the costume as well the the tutu so again we're, we're capturing the volume of the of the whole figure including what they're wearing so here we can use that technique to get um, the angles that his body is at as well. So that was super, super quick, but it just helped me like understand um, where they're at. Now we can do a little bit more of a scribbly one for fun. And this one, I will use the, the costume a little bit, like it's got this dropped waist. Um, and I'm gonna sort of emphasize, use that to help me emphasize the shape of, of the body of the dancer as well. Calf, switch on point. And here we can work in that angle of the chest. So I sort of said this already, but um, these are, you know, all techniques that you can use while drawing something live in front of you, not just tracing them, of course. And there we go. That's some more filled in scribbly kind of gesture of them that captures their pose. Um, so I'm just gonna move the light table out of the way. Um, and then we're just going to add a little bit of emphasis um, with some wet media. Um, so this paper I used is like a lightweight printer paper um, that I had a lot of, so didn't, you know, didn't feel bad about using a bunch of. Um, it's not like an ideal watercolor paper. <laughs> um, so you may want to uh, just be conscious of that um, if you are going to do this in, you know, in a wet media. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a little bit of a wash and go into some of those shadowy places and just give a little bit more dimension to our figure. So I'm going to use um, the same hue as as the, the color I used, but it's up to you. And I'm just getting like a little bit of purple in my brush there. And I've got my reference photo just in case. Um, can make this a little more dynamic. And I'm gonna go in and sort of shadow in here. So then the thing about the, the paint is that then, um, or like a wash of some kind, um, is that then you don't lose your, your fun line work and your sense of movement in the gesture. Um, part of drawing a, a gesture is usually they're done quickly. Um, you know, often like if you're doing them in a, in a sort of school setting or to um, as like a, a means of practice um, for oneself as an artist, um, timing them is like a pretty standard practice. Like you start with drawing the same pose for maybe as long as five minutes and then you go down to three minutes and then one minute and 30 seconds and 10 seconds and five seconds. So part of the gestural thing is like, how can I get this whole figure on the page um, in the time that's allotted to me in a short amount of time? Um, as a costume designer, like gestures are really popular um, as a way of starting out. You get like a pose that goes with the character and then you would put tracing paper on top and start drawing the body and then start drawing your costume and things like that. But the gesture is 
you know, it, it tells us so much about a person, right? Like the poses that we stand in um, and that sort of thing. So, so that can be like the basis for a figure in your art as well. Probably shadow in here. Um, and I just, you know, I, I enjoy the aesthetic of these quick gestures, which is partly why it's fun to not, not totally cover them up. Shadow at the back of the foot there. Um, and sort of like we talked about, right, the, the roundness of a leg means that the front of it, if, if the light's coming from the front, then probably you've got shadow on either side. I'm just going to do sort of the bottom of this arm here and then back here so that we know it's further back from us. There. And so that just adds a little more um, dimension to our figure. And let's try our, our person sitting and then we'll try our, our dancing couple. You could make these contrasting again. Um, so this is one where, as, as I said, when I was doing it, um, I, I sort of used um, a heavier um, hand with the marker going over the shadowy places too. This will help us emphasize that her hand is in front and it'll also help us emphasize because in this image the person is is wearing these wide pants so i can actually even use that to show the flow um, again a gesture isn't necessarily like a detailed thing right but um but part of it is like capturing the volume capturing the space that someone takes up so if their pants are taking up extra space, you might want to throw in a few of those little wrinkles um, as like your your next layer on top. I wouldn't be concerned with it for like the primary focus of your 30 second gesture necessarily. Just sort of shadow her belly there. Just adding that extra level of detail. And there we go. So just a little bit more depth. So I don't usually like shade in these ones that are just capturing the pose, I think I would um, generally leave that and and then put a, a layer on top to, to trace over it. But, um, you know, I could give it a shot here. So her tutu would make a shadow down her legs. Under the arms. And these two in, in the photo, they're under stage lighting. So um, they've got like quite a lot of light on them so that they can see their faces and things. There, I would say that that's enough for that little pose. And then we'll do the same thing over here.
it's kind of fun with the two figures because you can see um, probably the light's coming this way and she's casting a shadow on her partner's legs there. These ones are, because they're smaller figures, I didn't really want to use them as much for an example, but they really are quite a fun pose, so I'll finish them up real quick here. And there we have it. Um, so um, really, like we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gestures in that time and then added a layer of shadow on top and had me talk at you um, all in 36 minutes. So um, super fast technique, um, really quite fun to practice and to let yourself loose. Um, you know, it, you could do these things with different layers in different colors, different, those different techniques on top of each other, um, all sorts of things. So I hope that this has given you a little bit of a way to look at the human figure and um, a less intimidating way to maybe incorporate that into your art um, and, and to practice. Um, hopefully it's given you some, some ideas and, and ways to do that. Um, I will be sort of returning to this style of workshop um, to talk about contour and outline. Um, and then we'll work on something uh, in hopefully in the next couple of weeks, um, capturing motion um, in a bit of a different way, um, combining that that sort of gesture and contour stuff we learned. So I hope that you will continue to tune in to those workshops as well as all the other ones taught by um, my fabulous colleagues at Artbeat. Um, please do try to make some art. Um, it is so proven to have so many benefits. Um, any kind of creative practice that you feel like you want to be doing um, is good for you in so many ways, including your mental health. So I hope that you can find some joy from that and participate in whatever way you like. Um, and we love to see your art. So if you've made something in any of these workshops and you wanna like post a picture of it in the comments, um, we love to see that, it makes us really happy. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you had fun and learned a little something and uh, we'll see you next time.